Hi folks, this is Nathan with the ebookreader.com. For this video, I just wanted to give you guys a quick look at running Android on the Kobo Glow. So, uh, this isn't anything new. This has been out for a while, this uh, ROM that you can flash onto the Kobo's uh, SD card. So, you can do it with the Kobo Touch, the Kobo Glow, the Kobo Or HD. Uh, with those three devices, they can run the same version of Android, which is actually from the Tolino Shine, which is a German device. Uh, so it's they have the same hardware, so they're compatible. If you take out the memory card in the device, uh, there's also a dual boot. There's also a dual boot method. Uh, I haven't tried it yet, but I plan on trying it um, because I don't really like this what I have going right now. Because when I did this, I had, in order to do the method, the original method where you take out the SD card and you swap it out with this Android SD card with the image on it. Um, I ended up breaking the power switch on my Kobo, so the power button doesn't work anymore. So it's a pain in the butt to turn on, so I never actually use this thing anymore, but I still just wanted to show you guys just kind of what it looked like with this Android on here before I get rid of it entirely. Because um, I'm going to go ahead and try to do the dual boot method on my Kobo Aura HD, because, um, you know, I don't want to take apart the device again and risk breaking the power button, because it's pretty annoying when the power button doesn't work and you can't turn the device on and off. Turning it off is a piece of cake, because you come in here into settings, and then you can just set the screen to time out after two minutes or ten minutes or one minute whatever you want but as far as turning it on that's where the pain comes in um, I either gotta use like a magnet or a sleep cover so if you have a sleep cover it's not a big deal but I've heard of other people breaking their, their uh, switch too so it's just sort of a thing that happens if you take your device apart and you're not careful um, you can go ahead and adjust the front light brightness right here if you just go into brightness settings just like any Android device it's kinda cool you gotta use this button savior for everything since the Kobo devices don't have a back button. Actually, you can use the light button as a back button. Because the light button doesn't work to turn the light on and off anymore when you're in Android mode. You need to use that slider, like the brightness slider. So if you use that button, it uses it as a back mode. So let me go ahead and show you what this is on here. So this is running Android 2.3.4. So yeah, it's an older version for sure. Um, but it's still newer than what's on the Nook. But I do like the hacked Nook better, the Nook Touch. If you see my Nook Touch videos, there's just something smoother about the Nook Touch when it's hacked. It runs better. Um, I don't know. It's just it, it's faster. It's even, it's got the older version of Android, but it's it runs better in my opinion than this one um, with this Android 2.34 on here. So we got to use Button Saver, like I was saying. This is the menu button. Um, brings up your menu options, and that's the home screen button, and obviously that's the back button. So uh, this is kind of a weird launcher. I'm not really familiar with it. I don't really particularly like it. I would probably just install like ADW with a black and white theme if I were going to keep using this. Um, here's the uh, Kobo. This is thing switches orientation, but it's majorly whacked out. I touched it yesterday and then the, the touch screen basically stops working. So um, I think there's another app you have to install to make the, the uh, touch screen or the uh, Kobo rotate work right. So uh, that w when you get in landscape mode, the touch screen actually responds. So um, we've got the web browser on here. Uh, this is just the basic setup. I don't have it connected to Wi-Fi or anything, and I haven't installed any apps because, like I said, it's just too much of a pain turning the device on and off. Um, I have to, like, plug it in. That's one thing I was going to say before. If you plug it in um, with the AC adapter, that'll turn it on. Um, that's pretty much the only way, though. Uh, so let's go ahead and go back to the home screen. Uh, so that's some the different apps right here we got for reading. We've got the Moon Reader is installed. It's also got the regular Tolino app. Um, you can, it's got the email, Gmail app installed. Like I said, I don't have an account set up right now. See, it's pretty slow. I'm kind of used to the Nook Touch, and it's definitely quite a bit faster, and I don't know why exactly, but definitely is. So the Moon Reader, uh, obviously the menu is kind of dark here, so it's not the greatest option for ink. But once you get it loaded here, we can close Button Savior, so get it out of the way. Um, so the book, obviously, it looks good once it's loaded here. I do think that the fonts look better on the default Kobo device, just uh, because... It's, I don't know, it's just designed for the actual refresh and everything. This one, it's just a regular Android app, so you're not getting the full refresh. Uh, the fonts aren't quite as smooth as like they are with the Kobo device. You see right there, it does kind of weird things sometimes because we can scroll that wise. So it really sort of doesn't refresh the fonts as quite as much as like the regular Kobo app, so it's not quite as smooth around the edges and such. Alright, so back at the home screen, we can open up the apps over here. I was going through these before. Different options. This is just a weird launcher how it separates everything like this. So that was the Tolino app I was showing you before. I've also got All Reader on here. 
like I said, this is based off of German uh, firmware. So, I mean, there are German aspects to this. Like when it restarts, it'll say re it's like in German instead of like English. It's kind of different. And some of the menu stuff is in German as well. So, I mean, it is pretty cool, though, to have an Android device on an ink screen. So, I mean, it definitely does have its benefits, and you can install games, and there's all kinds of apps you can install. Like I said, I haven't set mine up, though, because just the turning on is too much of a hassle. So, I'm going to go ahead and try to get that dual boot card going on my Kobo or HD, and then I'll give you guys another review and show you, like, uh, more in-depth. I'll install some other apps, like Kindle app and uh, Kobo app and everything like that, so we can get a better idea of actually how this... Uh, Android operating system works on these Kobo's so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this video right here like I said I just wanted to give you guys a quick look basically how uh, the Android looks on the Kobo how it works um, it's not too bad like I said I mean it's a little bit slow here and there um, but it definitely opens up some different possibilities uh, as far as having the e-reader apps I mean you can install a whole bunch of e-reader apps and then you get access to all this other stuff so um, like you can install Dropbox on here and just get your ebooks through there it's a lot easier than uh, you know, going through the curated, the uh, locked in device that uh, Kobo sort of has normally. So it definitely opens up some more features, but it also closes off some of the cool Kobo features. So um, the dual boot method will be uh, cooler because you can run either Kobo software or you can run the Android software. So I'm going to go ahead and give that a try and I'll report back to you guys. Uh, check out theebookreader.com for some additional details and uh, thank you for watching. Have a good day.